Sigmund Freud separated the mind into three parts, with each having its own function. These are the id, the ego, and the superego. Here's a diagram where you can see where each one falls as you travel upwards from the unconscious to the pre-conscious and ending at the conscious level of the mind. Each of the three parts of the mind develops at a particular age. First to develop is the id. When a baby is born, its mind is bombarded with instinctual drives, which are collectively called the id. All the id wants is to have its desires fulfilled. It exists only for pleasure, and it wants immediate gratification. It does not consider what is realistic, nor does it have the ability to be logical or consider what is moral. These limitations arise because the id has no real awareness. It is just a collection of urges. It influences the mind by exerting pressure upon it and gives a feeling of release when its urges are fulfilled. According to Freud, these drives express themselves as sexuality and aggression. As you can see, the id is located totally in the unconscious. A baby's main concern is the fulfillment of its biological drives till around the second or third year, when the second portion of the mind develops, which is the ego. The mind started out as being totally id, but by this stage, the upper portion of the id is modified by the baby's experiences with the outside world, forming the ego. The baby learns that its urges cannot always be fulfilled, and the newly formed ego must control how much of the id's urges are allowed to express. Unlike the id, which is simply a collection of instinctual drives, the ego can think about things. It can observe reality and decide what is rational and realistic. The ego is what allows the mind to act. It is like our will. It exists at each of the levels, unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious. Beginning at around the age of five, a portion of the ego is modified and it becomes the superego, the third section of the mind. The superego is our conscience. It contributes our sense of right and wrong. It is basically a collection of moral lessons we have learned from our parents, society, and organized religion. The superego uses guilt to punish the ego if it misbehaves, and rewards it with pride if it complies with its wishes. Like the id, the superego thinks nothing about what is realistic. It wants moral perfection. The id and superego are always battling each other to control behavior, so the ego's main job is to mediate between these two. It chooses which one gets to express itself. If the id expresses itself too much, a person can act in ways that are inappropriate or destructive. Similarly, if the superego has too much freedom, a person can become a rigid perfectionist. The superego would demand moral requirements that are so severe that the person could never live up to them, and he would suffer constant feelings of guilt. Like the ego, the superego is located throughout all three areas of the mind. Freud believed that a mentally healthy person has a strong ego, keeping the id and superego balanced, because if they became imbalanced, mental illness would result. Anxiety is a signal to the ego that it is facing a situation which demands action. It could be that the id or superego is becoming too dominant, or it could be a situation where there is a moral dilemma involved, in which case the id and the superego are battling for who is going to be expressed. The ego also has the ability to make use of defense mechanisms to avoid anxiety. And there you have it, the id, the ego, and the superego.